Okay. So, one of the most uh, popular and uh, um, most some sense mind blowing thing uh, with the ensemble method space, right? So, boosting. In fact, the original uh, boosting work, uh, uh, original analysis of the boosting work comes from theoretical computer science community, not necessarily from an empirical machine learning community, right? So, therefore, they, they were uh, that they looked at having some oracle that had a probability slightly greater than 0.5 of being correct, right? And then uh, they tried to see how you can get better and better predictions from somebody who is just above 0.5. Okay? By combining many, many such oracles, right? I can keep improving my accuracy of prediction arbitrarily close to 1. Right. So, that is the amazing part. Right. I start off with each individual predictor has accuracy of 0.5 plus some epsilon, just, just better than random. Right. I can combine a lot of them together and produce something that has accuracy close to 1. Right. So, this was a very big result that came out earlier. And so, we are going to look at some kind of uh, simplified uh, version of it. So, the remember the goal that distinguishes, I mean the, the main thing that distinguishes boosting from the other methods is that boosting is inherently serial. Okay. So, boosting is going to build this ensemble classifier in an incremental fashion, right, where at each stage I am going to try and explicitly reduce the error produced by the previous stage. So, this is something that you have to keep in mind. You just cannot write, you just cannot come up with some ensemble method and call it a boosting method. Right? I have seen that happen uh, in uh, many papers that I have reviewed. Right? People just write something that has multiple classifiers in it, so it is boosting because they have read somewhere that boosting is a very hot area and people, my papers in boosting get accepted. So, they come up with any classifier and any, any ensemble method and call it boosting. Boosting has this very specific property that at every stage you add one more classifier to the existing ensemble right and this is done in such a fashion as to reduce the error produced by the classifier up till that point okay make sense sorry you get a choice as to what to add next right so that is that you choose it such a way that you minimize the error that you have not at least you reduce the error okay so not necessarily minimize but you reduce the error of whatever has happened as a prediction till that point okay does it make sense okay so that is essentially what boosting is sometimes you can think of it as error boosting sometimes they call it as error boosting and so on and so forth uh, the one very popular uh, uh, and uh, one of the original uh, boosting algorithms is called add a boost right so let's let's I am just going to, I am going to put up a tutorial for you guys to refer to, okay. I am just, I will use the notation from the tutorial. So, I will not translate it to the notation in the textbook, okay. So, when you read the textbook, you have to do the translation yourself, okay. So, that is one of the main problems when you have too many different disciplines contributing to the same field, right. Machine learning has people from computer vision, people from statistics, people from AI and all, all other disciplines contributing to it and each one of them brings their own notation to the mix right so it so becomes it uh, becomes harder to keep track of everything but uh, I, I can't leave the i out okay it's unnecessarily complicating my case So, I am going to denote by C subscript 
x the m minus 1th stage classifier okay. that is obtained by basically adding the outputs of all these individual classifiers. So, the alpha 1, alpha 2 to alpha m minus 1 right. So, I am going to add up these are the weights and k 1 is a classifier that I added in the first stage right. K 2 is the classifier added in the second stage and so on so forth and k m minus 1 is the classifier added in the m minus 1 stage okay. And I basically I want to produce that Yeah, 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 the rest of the class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, there are a couple of things which I should point out here. One of the most obvious ways of doing this, forget about Adabus, one of the most obvious ways of doing this is to say that, okay, I am going to take this guy, right? Look at the residual error, you know. I can think of this as a prediction problem, right? And look at the residual error of the predictor, right? And then train a classifier KM to minimize the residual error right. So, what will be my alpha m? <coughs> Essentially, you have to make sure that this whole thing is along the direction of the residual. So, we, we talked about this earlier right, when where did we talk about this? Forward st yes, stage wise or step wise? Stage wise. Stage wise. Yes. So, so, when you talked about stage wise feature selection, we talked about something similar, right? So, you could think of something along the same lines here. Instead of thinking of selecting features, right, I am just selecting classifiers, right? So, I can just take the residual error uh, of Cm minus 1 and then use that to train Kmx and then add it here, right? In fact, this can be. can be 1 does not matter because the KM, my KM of x will actually align itself in the direction of the residual. So, I can just add it here. So, that is fine right. So, that is the simplest way to do this thing uh, and it is actually uh, a good way to do it if you are doing regression. Okay. Does it make sense right. I can take this as I can take the residual error and then train my KM to actually go in the direction of the residual error. So, I can actually do this. Uh, so, I can get a boosting like algorithm for regression just by training it along the direction of the residual right. But when I am doing classification that is not necessarily the right thing to do. So, people come up with different kinds of uh, loss functions and then they try to uh, improve the classification. So, the loss function we will look at is the exponential loss. Do people remember the exponential loss? I, I talked about it when we are doing SVMs. That's the exponential loss. Okay, e power minus y a f of x i. Right. So we looked at the exponential loss earlier. So we will essentially continue with that. So I'll sum over all the training points. Right. So, that is the exponential loss for the mth stage classifier right. People agree with me on that. Okay, so, that is essentially what I wanted to write right and I have expanded the C m and I have written it as this expression in the bracket here. 
Yet, can people see me at the back? I see, not me, but the. I am kind of hard to miss. Right? That makes sense? Okay, great. So, this thing we already know, right? So, there is no control we have over that. That thing we already know, that is given to us. All we need to find is alpha m and k m, right? So, I am going to rewrite this as. What is that? That is the loss function we are going to be using, right? That is the exponential loss function. So, for classification, we looked at, if you remember, we looked at the different loss functions and we start when we looked at hinge loss right and i said exponential loss is one of the loss functions and this is how we defined it so essentially i'm using that exponential loss function here and in fact i mean this was not the way ada boost was originally derived okay ada boost was derived in a completely different way and later on about 5 years after they published ada boost they kind of discovered the connection between this kind of uh, uh, stage wise modeling right forward ad additive stage wise additive modeling and exponential loss they said okay I can do forward stage wise modeling with an exponential loss function I end up with add a boost and that connection was discovered 5 years later but now almost always people except except in the theory community in the machine learning community it is always introduced like this. So, where WMI is Yeah, yeah, the same thing I wrote here. So, the weight of the ith data point at the mth stage, right? The weight of the ith data point at the mth stage is essentially e power minus y i c m minus 1 of x i, right? So, what does this mean? What is exactly this expression if you think about it? It is the loss I have incurred on that point x i up till the m minus 1 stage, right? That is essentially that, right? Just the loss that I have incurred on the ith data point up till the stage m minus 1, right? Okay, now I am going to break that sum up into two components. So, what do you think of these two components? No, 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 no. This, this varies here e power alpha m minus e. So, when will I get e power minus alpha m? When I am correctly classified it. When I will get e power alpha m when I am misclassified it. So, these are all the data points such that So, all the correctly classified data points, these are all the 
misclassified data points right. <coughs> This intuitively you can see where we are going with this. So, what is the best classifier that I can find at the mth stage? Hmm? Well, obviously, the best classifier I can find the one for which this summation is empty, duh, right? I mean, get everything correct classified correctly. So, that is the best classifier, but now it is a crux, right? Remember, our classifiers are all weak classifiers. And as at least that is the basic assumption we are starting off with, right? The classifiers are all weak classifiers. I can do only slightly better than random. So, I have to get nearly half the data points incorrect, right? So, which half should go here? Which half should come here? And then we can move one data point from to here, that to here, to make it better than half. <laughs> so, which half should go here? Which half should come here? Intuitively, you tell me. Which one will incur less penalty? What is small? It's half man, what is small half? That will be more clear to me. That will be more clear as to what is small means. But no, no, there is a valid way of interpreting small half. Tell me what is that? One less than half. No, 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 no. WMs. Right? So, all the w's that have a large value should come here, because they get multiplied by e power minus alpha. The w's that have a small value should go there, because they get multiplied by e power alpha m. So, what are w's with small values? The ones that I have correctly classified up to the previous point. W's with a large value are the ones that I have incorrectly classified up to the previous point. So, at the mth stage, what I should be looking at is try to get the data points which I misclassified from the previous stage, try to get them correctly as many as possible, right. So, that is essentially the intuition behind add a boost. So, at every stage, what you do is you try to look at the previous stage, see which are the data points you misclassified, you try to get them correctly in this stage. And it is okay if you make mistakes on data points that you have correctly classified till the previous stage. Why is it okay? Well, because those classifiers can possibly adjust for it, okay. Then we will look at how we will actually do this again, right. So, I am going to call So, all the weights of all the data points I got correct at the m stage, right. Likewise, weight of all the data points I made a mistake on at the m stage, right. So, then I can write my E as simply as So, if you think about it, the value of alpha really does not matter in my choice of Km, right. Regardless of the value of alpha, right, regardless of value of alpha m, whatever argument I gave you just now holds. Right. The idea is to see how much of the weight, the weight you can push to W c, right and how less of the weight you keep in W v. I mean there is total of weight, right, so there is some total W, right, W is a constant, right, W c plus W v is a constant. W is a 
call so this is the body so the goal is now to see how much weight you can push into wc as opposed to w the km will be a classifier that tries to put as much weight into wc as opposed to w so how will you do this well you can use the classifier that uses that can assign weights to data points we discussed this very briefly in the decision tree Same weights to data points, and you can essentially multiply the error that you make on a data point by the corresponding weight. Right? So the error that you make, you multiply by the corresponding weight, so that will give you the weighted minimizer. Right? There are other ways of doing this. So one way, so people see what I'm saying about KM, right? So you see what you are supposed to do to get your KM. The KM is such that Maximum weight goes into WC. So you are splitting your W into two parts, and depending on what data points you are making mistakes on, right? The data points you don't make mistakes on contribute to WC. The data points you make mistakes on contribute to WE. And you want to see how much larger you can make WC than WE. So basically, that's the classifier you have to find. So for that, you use some kind of a weighted classifier. So one way of achieving this is to do the following. You assign weights to all the data points. Now, what you do is you go and sample from these data points according to their weights. You create a new training set, a sampling from these data data points that was given to you according to the weights. So, what does this mean? Points for which the weight is higher will get sampled more often into this data set. Points for which the weights are very low might not even appear in the data set. So if a point appears multiple times in the data set, then when you are trying to minimize that training error, you are likely to get that point correct. So instead of using a directly using a weighted uh, training algorithm, people simulate that by sampling from the data with the weights. Okay. So what has happened, unfortunately, because of this, uh, it kind of tends to contaminate bagging and boosting in the minds of people. And if you look at some of the data mining uh, textbooks. Especially some of the earlier data mining textbooks. Okay, bagging and boosting will be uh, described in a very similar fashion. Right? What do you do in bagging? Whenever you add a new classifier, right? Some random picture, let me tell you. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. Ah, so in the older uh, textbooks, how they describe is the what you do in bagging is every time you generate a new sample, you sample uniformly, right? With replacement, right? You sample with replacement. In boosting, the difference is every time you generate a new sample, you use the prediction error from the previous time. That is the only difference between bagging and boosting. Right? Operationally, if you think about it, so that is the only difference between bagging and boosting. But then boosting is inherently serial and then there is this error minimization property. Right? But that never comes across and people just tend to think of uh, boosting as bagging with a different sampling distribution. Right? But that is uh, incorrect. Right? The, 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 the fundamental principles of the, the two things are very different. So we have found KM now, right? So we all know how to find KM. You do some kind of weighted error minimization, you find KM. So what is next? What is next? We need to find alpha M, right? See, regardless of what value of alpha M, alpha M you choose, the minimizer is the, uh, for KM is the one that gives you maximum weight into WC. 
right. But then having chosen a km, I now have to choose an alpha m that gives me the error reduction. So, how do you go about doing that? In fact, we can do our So, set is equal to 0 So, alpha m is essentially half ln 1 minus the error rate. Right? So, error rate is essentially the weight of the data points on which you are making a mistake divided by the total weight. Right? So, this is for the kmth classifier alone. Right? We is the data points on which the mth classifier alone makes the error, not cm, but km. Okay? So, that is what we divided these things into, right. So, this is the thing where k m makes an error, right. So, essentially that. So, the data points on, so essentially it tells you how good the classifier is. The classifier is really good, right, not just on the data points that you are interested in, but on the entire data set, right. If the classifier is very good, then the weight will be high, right. If the, in fact, if the classifier has an error of 0, what will happen? Weight will be infinity because that is the only classifier you will need, right. If you have an error of 0 on all the data points, why do you need other classifier? Just that one is enough, right. But then suppose it has a very high error, error close to 1, weight will be 0, okay. So, depending on how good the classifier is, this weight will vary, okay. And then anything else that you have to do, I have found km, I have found alpha m, what do I have to do now? I have to change my w's now for the next stage, right. So, the, my, what, what is my w i? It is e power minus y i c m minus 1 x i, right. So, now it has to become e power minus y i into c m x i. So, what is the right best way to do that? Just multiply the existing w by e power minus y into k m x i. Right, does it make sense? After you have done that, you come here, okay. I do not want to erase that part. So, because you need the alpha m here for your update. So, once you find the alpha m, you come back here and change the weights of all the data points by this amount. Okay. Does it make sense? So, that is a 
uh, plain uh, simple version of Adaboost. Right. So, in fact, we can show that uh, the exponential loss function is very closely related to the deviance, right? And uh, in fact, uh, an equally popular version of boosting called logit boost exists, <coughs> where uh, we actually use the deviance, uh, the the logistic uh, uh, function, right? The log odds function that we used for logistic regression. You can use the same error function and then de de derive all the update rules that we just did for the exponential loss function. You can do the same thing for the logit function, the log odds function also and you can come up with similar update rules. Okay. So, the reason Adaboost is so popular is because it yields such very simple updates. Right? So, if you think about it, all the computation you do is okay, you find a classifier that minimizes this weighted uh, error, right? then you come back and compute this alpha m right? and then you go back and change the weights and then repeat until you are happy with the performance of the total classifier. Right? And uh, both with basting, I mean <laughs> bagging and boosting, uh, the <laughs> combine both you start basting things. Anyway, uh, so do, do both, uh, decision trees are very popular classifiers for this. Okay? Uh, in uh, bagging, it seems to make sense, right? Why you want to bag decision trees? They are uh, notoriously unstable. So, if you want to, if you bag decision trees, you get more stable estimates. Why would you want to bag? Uh, why do you want to boost decision trees? Are they weak classifiers? Is it? Initially with less number of branches. Exactly. So, what you do with decision trees, in fact, you can do the most extreme thing. You can just have one node, just have the root node, right? Right, one node, what can you do with one, one node decision tree? Yeah, that is somewhat like linear, right? Yeah, so it is somewhat like linear, I agree, but uh, people call it decision trees, right? So, one node decision tree because of the way I choose which, which feature I pick, right? I will use information gain or Gini index or one of those things. I okay. will at least get 50 percent classification, right? otherwise I would not even split right? on that 50 percent, I will be better than 50 percent, right? I will be better than random even if I split on one node. Right? So, I will split on one node and uh, or maybe if, if, if the performance is too weak, I can perform, I can do a two level tree. Okay? These are called decision stumps. I do not build a full tree, but it is like chopped off at a very close to the root. Right, so one or two levels of the tree. So they are weak classifiers, and they take very very little time to estimate. Right, I can do many 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 of these very quickly. Okay, essentially, what I do is I boost these decision stumps. Okay, in fact, uh, there is one uh, result in the book if you look at it. Right, so I don't remember the exact scale on the y-axis, uh, but the x axis is the number of levels of boosting that they do, right? And so on and so forth. Number of levels of boosting that they do. So, 100, 200, 300, and so on and so forth. So, a single stump, right, gives some performance level at that height, okay? Just one stump. The best single stump gives you a performance there. And they trained it on the full data and they get a performance here, and this is like a 244 node tree. 244 nodes. It's a fairly complex tree they built, and that's the performance that they get, right? And then they did boosting. They start here obviously with a single node, right? And then they do boosting, and then they find that the tree, the the, the performance just keeps improving as they do add a boosting. Remember, and these are all single node trees, okay? They are all single node trees, and so essentially, by when they reach 100, that means they have only 100 nodes basically. And they are way better than the 244 nodes that you get with a single tree, right? And when they reach 244 nodes, they are like more than twice as good as the single tree they built with 244 nodes. Okay. Because the objective function you are minimizing is something very, very different, right? At every stage, you are changing the function, and you are focusing your efforts on actually getting to the harder parts of the space, right? So that essentially is the, the Thing, right? It's magical. In fact, this is more dramatic. It's, it's something like this. But look at look at the book. If, 
for the exact figure right. right so, this, this, this is really amazing boosting is very powerful and uh, in fact, I um, will talk briefly about random forest in the next class uh, which is uh, you do not even have to do any decision making right you do things randomly, but then do a lot of them right. Uh, that is also very powerful. So, random forest is not a boosting technique by the way, random forest is a bagging technique right, uh, but then uh, that is also very powerful.